think Wait, the American there, public excuse me, would, there, but there's no there's no connection to President Biden. So what can you explain that? What are you talking about? Well, uh, yeah, well, yes, ma'am, there is this this latest transaction. There absolutely is, and there's a monthly payment. Wait, are you talking the about the thirteen hundred the thirteen hundred eighty dollar transaction, the the car payment reimbursement? Well, that, that, now that's what they're calling it. But actually, I was actually no. That's talking what you're, in the you're, the committee, about, the committee the put out a receipt that shows it's a reimbursement for a car payment. And well, and also some of the other the ways in which fact. you're characterizing some of the things about the involvement, it's just not as clear cut as you are uh, characterizing it to are, be. Are so let me. Are you going to let me talk? Well, I am going to make. Let me talk or I, I am. I did You're let you speak. Me speak uh, well, Congressman, no, with all due respect, I did let. You. I know. This is CNN, no, I. And that's what you no, you're speaking over me, I sir. With all due, re right. with all due respect, I let you speak, people, and the then I clarified just to be clear about what you were saying. So then, let me ask you this, and I will let you speak. James Comer must have been busy, so Representative Tim Burchett took his place, running with hypotheses and conclusions about the Bidens on cable news instead of connecting the transaction with their declarations. And to be fair, Brianna Keeler was cutting him off to fact check him in real time, but she was still interrupting him. Here's his answer, though, about that Chinese connection to the truck payments. Since you're saying, uh, you know, that so much of this has to do with President Biden, although there is no evidence of that, will the Oversight Committee subpoena him? Will the Oversight Committee subpoena who? President, President. Biden or, or, or Hunter? I don't know. Um, at some point, I suspect that could happen, but I doubt he would show. And I doubt Hunter is going to show now that he has officially been indicted for tax evasion and, and uh, uh, arms, uh, uh, having a pistol when he was, in fact, on drugs. But back to my previous point, there is a clear line between the communist China $5 million investment with Hunter Biden. Ma'am, the only qualification he has, as far as I can see, or job on a job application is is hookers and crack cocaine. Let's just be honest. This guy is bad news. And you all want to cover for him, and that's fine. Hookers and crack cocaine. Didn't hear any connection to corruption with the president, but as long as these guys keep talking about penises, crack, prostitutes, and whether or not Hunter got the sport package on his truck, they figure that their supporters are going to listen. And the fact that they've proven Hunter lived the life of an addict with access to resources that most don't have, those are the pieces of information they're hoping to get people to assume that Joe was also involved, which would be interesting if they show it. So for now, it's the public trial of a president's son who was involved in some illegal activity. I, I couldn't take out $1.6 billion from a, uh, from a Citibank account where I do my banking. I mean, in, he was involved in human trafficking, money laundering. He was a foreign agent. None of that stuff was filed here. These are people that he hired. Now, this is $683,000. And everybody's wondering, like, why do we care about this? Let me tell you why you care about this. He put these as business expenses. So when they're trying Traveling, he was claiming them as if they were his employees, but they weren't employees. Um, they were people doing business. They were working. XX rated material for him. Janine Pirro had it wrong. It was 1.6 million, not billion. It was just a verbal mistake from her, but supporters will soon consider it a fact, just like the loads of charges that they've only made on TV appearances. And when it comes to actual charges, though, Hunter's attorney, Abe Lowell, gave some extra details about how those were brought forward. What did, what did prosecutors say to you and to your client as to why things changed? Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, they said nothing. Indeed, this was a complete surprise to us, notwithstanding we had been in contact with them. Indeed, I think about a week ago, I called the U.S. Attorney's Office for a status check so that I could come in and talk to them if they had any idea that they wanted to bring any additional charges after the gun charges. And at the time of that telephone conversation, they said, no, you already had that meeting. Well, that was based on their investigation years ago. So I said, I want a new meeting. And what they said was, well, we don't know we can do it. I wrote a letter both to David Weiss and copied the attorney general saying, if there's any new evidence, then we should come in and address it. If there's no new evidence, then how can you justify anything other than what you did in June? And their response was first silence and then the indictment without any communication back to me. You know, again, if I've done this work. I am in the defense bar. That's not the way it works. Prosecutors engage with defense attorneys to discuss the investigation and the possible charges.